Google Ads audit. Get inside my brain as I'm inside a Google Ads account. How can we scale it to the next level? Let me show you. Let's get into it. Hey people, okay, we've got another Google Ads audit here. Audit videos are basically videos where I'm sharing my screen inside a Google Ads account as I'm going through and finding all the opportunities and low hanging fruit to save money and scale that account to the next level. A lot of people will come to me asking for advice. Hey, can you look at my Google Ads account? And I'll say, yes, I can do that. Just let me film it so I can send it to you. And I've realized this provides a fantastic record of strategies and recommendations and you can apply these to your own account or even when you're setting up new campaigns, keep these in mind and it will really help your results. If you're new here, my name is Sam and I help e-commerce stores grow remotely. I've grown several seven-figure stores of my own and people I know. If you want to get more tutorials, case studies and audit videos just like this one, consider subscribing so you can learn and grow your store too. Okay, so I need to keep this brand secret just to respect the owner's privacy. So I'm gonna blur a bunch of things out in this video. I can tell you what they do sell. They sell men's grooming products like shavers, moisturizer, face cream, stuff like that. It's basically products for guys that make them look beautiful. They sell within Australia and this brand has a lot of potential because they have an amazing website and high quality products. They're definitely servicing a need. When I looked into this account, I found some huge mistakes. Conversion tracking wasn't set up, bidding wasn't done properly, and they were leaving out a lot of big demographic targeting that they should be using. I recommend watching this video and comparing it to your own campaigns to see if there's any opportunities for yourself. Are you making any big mistakes in your own strategy? Let us know in the comments. Without further ado, let's get into the audits. All right, hey, Sam here. I'm just gonna go over your Google Ads account. Um, into all the different campaigns, uh, give an overview and give my recommendations. So first things first that I always like to check is the conversion tracking and we talked about this on the call, but really I like to frame the whole audit around the conversion the conversions, basically seeing what the potential is. The hard thing is that there's no conversions in the account because conversion tracking isn't set up. So here, you know, here's the convert. these are just ones like templated ones to get pulled in, but they're not actually tracking conversions. Well, this one says it is, but that's the sh app shopping app page view. So someone's probably clicked in on shopping and opened up in the actual shop, just keeping on Google, and that's tracked a conversion there. Um, but that's not, you know, that's that's not the same. We all we do want to do is track those conversions on the site. So once we get those set up, that's going to make a big difference with actually seeing how things are performing in the account. Um, so we'll, what I'll do first is I'll go into some of these uh, display campaigns. So these aren't, aren't badly set up, they're, they're really good. Um, there are a few suggestions I would make. Um, let me check out the settings first. That's what I always like to do with campaigns. Cool, so yeah, so you're targeting Australia, that's really good. Um, I would change this to the second one. So what this is, is you set the location up here, which is fine, Australia, but then this is like the actual type of targeting you're gonna be using. So there are three different options. So this is the default one and I would not use that at all. What it does is that it shows your ads to people that are in Australia, but also interested in Australia. The problem is there is that someone might be searching for a hotel in Sydney, but they're over in LA or they're in India or something like that. And you're going to show up for that same, that click, someone searching, even though they're not physically in Australia yet. So I would change, change this to the second one, people in or regularly in. So the people that are actually in Australia, that would make a much more sense. Um, Maximize clicks, that can work. I prefer to use manual bidding, especially at the start, just because it's just gonna get the cheapest clicks, which doesn't sound bad initially, but it means that they're cheap because no one else is, it's not competitive, no one else is bidding on them, and that's often because they're just not converting. So Google's gonna get your budget, say if it's $10, and try and fit as many clicks as possible, so you're gonna get volume, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those clicks are really valuable. What we wanna do is bid based on the actual conversions, whether it's actually profitable. So yeah, but that's not that's not a, a big issue, but you know, it does mean that you don't have control over the bids, you're really giving that to Google, and they're only gonna show your ads based on can they get a click or not. It's not actually based on can it actually convert, uh, which is really important. So going back into, and uh, these are all set up pretty similarly, but uh, um, I'm gonna go into, say the, I saw the, you didn't have audiences set up in here, but you're using keywords, that's cool. That's totally cool. Um, 
what I would do here. So this is really fine. That's awesome. And you're getting a lot of traffic for that. That's great. What I would do is really take a look at the, the demographics. So it's like, usually you would do this based on actual conversion data. So what you should be able to see is say, if we went to conversions here, um, like the actual volume of conversions, but even especially the ROAS conversion value divided by cost conversion value. No, nope, it's not here right now. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I missed it. Yeah, so what you'd be able to see there is it will show this other column which shows you the actual ROAS for every single age group. You can then get an idea of what sort of bid adjustments you can make relative to how those age groups perform relative to the mean. Um, and so, yeah, you can really boost up and make bid adjustments here, right in this column here. Um, and you can you can do that for each, each different um, ad group that you've got. Um, what I would also check out, you know, you've got gender here. I would just do this right away is like going to exclusions here and create an exclusion for females, even females and unknown, just to be really sure. Because um, for some of these, you know, you're getting a lot of clicks for females. I think this one, yeah, that one's getting a lot more just because it's just general like grooming and health stuff. And there's just way more women out there, you know, searching for that stuff, interested in that sort of stuff on YouTube, on blogs, everywhere. So you're really gonna get way more targeted traffic just by excluding females. I would also do unknown just so that you're really sure that it's all men. Um, but yeah, I would do this, you know, household income. This is like super underutilized is demographic adjustments. Um, like you can really build out campaigns just targeting certain adjustments. That's what people do on Facebook, but really on, on Google is like, no one even touches this because they're too busy doing bids, which is really important too. But man, especially when there's a lot of variance, like in yours, there's a lot of variance. Like in, you know, that's normal because you know, it's, it's, a, like a, it's a subject that has quite a variation between the behavior of men and women. You know, that's, that's normal. Um, so that's what I would do. A big thing I would focus on there is the demographics. Uh, once you've got that conversion data, then you can change the bids uh, for the keywords um, if you're running, testing different ads on that sort of thing as well. Um, so the, yeah, that's for, that's for, um, the display campaigns. The last thing I'm going to go into the shopping campaign. This is where a lot of, a lot of stuff to get into. So you've got your shopping set up and it's pulling directly from Shopify. That's cool. Let's go into the settings. Okay. So country of sale, Australia, da, 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 that's all good. Okay. Bidding. I would definitely not, I would, wouldn't use maximize conversion value because that needs to use conversion data and you've got nothing in the account. So Google's is. It, it, it's just going to keep showing random ads and just, it's not going to like, it's not going to have the data it needs to make those changes. I would change that to manual with, en with enhanced CPC bidding strategy that just allows you to have that extra control at the start to just get that volume of conversions as quick as possible. That's what I would do. Um, and then I would go in and adjust the bids based on the product level. I'll get into that in a second, but that's one thing I would change. Really, really important. The second thing is that you're showing this campaign to the whole world. I'm not sure if you know this, all countries and states and territories. So, and you're also showing it for the interested in, which is what I showed you in the other campaigns. So change that to this one, people in or regularly in, changes to Australia because I'm, sh I'm sure you're not gonna be shipping to, I'm not, maybe you are, but you you don't even, you if you're gonna ship, if you're gonna be shipping to uh, Europe, Asia, uh, the, the Americas, you want to have different campaigns that where it makes sense for each of those areas, because the clicks are going to be vastly different um, in terms of cost and conversion, like the ROAS for all those, those product or those, um, the search queries is going to be different depending on the, the location, like definitely. So you want to segment based on that um, in terms of, so there's that. So um, the other thing is that your account here is it's like, um, it's been set up initially as an express Google ads account, which is now called a smart account. The problem is, is that right now I can't actually see your search queries. So for example, um, let me pull over this one. So this is another account and these are all the shopping campaigns. So let me go into like this shopping campaign. Oh, let me go into this generic one here. Um, and so you see on the side, the, the sidebar is, is very different. Uh, let me go back to that one. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So you see the sidebar here is super, is really different. Um, it's like they've tried to simplify everything um, because it's express. So it's all about for the rookies, you know? Um, so if I go into keywords here, this is really powerful. I can actually see for the shopping campaign, all the search queries that people are converting with. So Europe SIM card, you know, that's our best converting has a massive amount of volume for yours. I can't see that at all. And I was figuring out, trying to figure out how I could get that shown because we have other accounts that are express, but then you can actually convert them to an expert account. 
but I think they've actually removed that option. I was, I was Googling about it. And what we need to do is ring up Google and say like, let's convert this, like this is, because right now there's like, even though there's no conversions, it's, it, you can't see the performance of this campaign. What we could do is at least see the volume of, of traffic for the search queries. For example, say, say international SIM card, say you've like, um, you've had some sort of product um, that, that, that I'm not gonna, I can't think of an example, but you've had like one of your products and there's a search query that's just killing it, getting so much traffic and it looks highly relevant with high intent. We'd wanna then adjust the product feed um, with that in there. So anyway, what I can do is I can jump in here. Um, it's set to maximize conversion value, I believe. So you can't actually um, adjust the bid, which is really crucial because how we would manage the campaign is you have, these are all the individual products and you'll see um, like, you know, the volume of clicks is different between all of them, but also once you get conversion data, the cost per conversion or the ROAS is gonna be different for all of them too. What we wanna do, even here, you can see the average CPC is quite, there's a lot of variance here, just because of the competitive nature of these different products and the, the queries that Google's trying to show for, as well as um, they're using their own algorithms and stuff like that. But basically there's gonna be a lot of variation uh, between the different products. For example, let me jump into, actually I gotta go into ad groups. Um, so let me go into here, you'll see here in this campaign for this client, um, there's like all, these are the number of conversions and the actual sale, like the number of sale in dollars. That's really different for all of them. And the conversion rate of what it costs, the ROAS is so different. You know, some are like four, some are 12. Um, and so what we want to be doing is adjusting all these bids. And this is a thing over time because right now it's showing for all time, but over like every 30 days or every two weeks, depending on the volume of traffic, you want to be adjusting these bids based on how well it's performing. So say if you know, this one here has got a row of 10, of, this has been running for, I don't know how many months, like oh, five or six months. Um, so yeah, so like that's something that we would be changing and going, okay, like this one here, you know, it's 2.3 and we've, we've pulled it down to, two, to 23 cents because the ROAS is much lower for this one. This, uh, this SIM card, it just doesn't convert as well. It's a worldwide SIM card. Um, it's actually the same product as, no, it's a different one. No, that's its own product, so I was wrong. Yeah, it's just, I think the price is actually really high for this product, so it doesn't have as a high conversion rate or, or something like that. So it's just not getting the same results, but it's still, you know, we're getting, we can get that profitable. So we reduce the bids. That's gonna increase the row ads, but it's de gonna decrease the actual volume of conversions. You'll see that's why 48 conversions over the lifetime. Um, that's okay because we're okay with reducing the volume of conversions if it actually means that those conversions are profitable, if the average profit per conversion is actually a net, net positive. Um, anyway, that's what we would do with this one, but we need that conversion data. When you have it on manual, uh, automatic like this, we do like automatic campaigns. It's not a bad thing at all. We actually really like them and we've seen them kill it. Um, but Google needs that initial conversion data to get them going. You can't just start off with automatic and then pray for the best. You know, that's gonna take a long time, months often. Um, and a lot of budget. So that's what, that's what we recommend. Um, so yeah, in terms of the actual product feed, I believe I talked about this on the call, is what we definitely do, because you're just pulling straight from what's on the store. Um, and what we wanna do is really improve these, these the product titles in particular. So for example, especially if this sort of stuff is targeted at men, you would say for men or male or, or something like that. And you'd be much more descriptive with what's actually in the title. Uh, for example, for our, this this client, see how these is it's much longer. Australia travel sim card with three pieces of data for 15 days, has a free, easy to use travel, travel sim, sims direct. And a lot of stuff we've just repeated the same thing in all of them. Um, you know, because firstly, you want to make it optimized for the search engine, but also you want to try and get those clicks. So, you, you, you know, you're putting those features or benefits or call to action in the actual title as well. And, um, and we've played around a lot with the images here to try and get that, click-through rate higher. Um, shopping is notorious for having really low click-through rates, um, but yeah, we wanna, that's a big thing, because then once you've capped out the volume of traffic that's out there, that's when you go, okay, we, let's make the most of this traffic that is out there. Um, so yeah, that's what I would definitely yeah, improve. Oh, I've just lost my face, hopefully it's still recording. Um, so yeah, so that's what I would definitely improve um, and make sure we adjust that and optimize that. So yeah, um, that's everything I have. Um, there's a lot of work here, but really, Getting that conversion data, um, conversion tracking set up properly is going to be the best start um, to getting this. This can't the, the data in the door.
for us to start doing optimizations. But even what, with what we have, I think there's some, some good stuff to work with. So thanks for your time. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Okay, I hope you found that video useful. There were a lot of recommendations there that you can apply to your own campaigns and even help you avoid making mistakes in the future. I put a lot of time into this content, so if you found it useful, please hit the like button because that tells YouTube, hey, this guy's making good content. Otherwise, if you wanna see more videos like this one on how to scale and grow your e-commerce store, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can get more videos just like this one. We do a lot of videos just like this one and we try to make them insanely valuable so you can learn quickly and grow your own store and your own marketing campaigns. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.